Hello Twin Flame and welcome back to my channel. My name is Michelle Funden. I am an author and speaker and I'm here with another episode of the Twin Flame Angelic Messages channeled. It has been quite some time as this is number five in the series and it's probably been three to four weeks since I last posted a channeling but there is a perfectly good reason for this as the energies have been quite strange <laughs> to, to put it mildly energies have been quite strange so if you are new to the twin flame angelic channeling the way I channel for this video slash podcast is I take some time a few days before I decide to record and I always communicate with my angelic messages via writing. So I write things down. It's sort of a letter format back and forth from angelic guidance to myself and back. And then I will read during this session. I will read what was written. And then following that, I'm going to give a commentary on my interpretation. Because sometimes during the actual channeling, the interpretation is not super clear. Sometimes it's really clear and sometimes it's a little, you know, encoded, if you will. And that's the way heaven speaks sometimes. So with no further ado, I'm going to give you guys what was channeled um, a few days ago. Dear angels, why is it so hard for divine feminine twin flames to keep the faith these days? We had mentioned to you that some are falling away and this is rocking the boat and shaking things up. Dear angels, can you please elaborate on that? The divine feminines I know have worked so hard and many are still losing faith. Please do elaborate. The world is at war and not in the sense that you think we mean. Let us clarify. We are not speaking of guns and shooting. We are speaking of things on a much deeper level. The essence of human existence is at stake here. And when we speak of that, we speak of the soul of the human, of course. The core, the core of what makes a human a human is in terrible peril. Many are focused on war at large, in quotes, when the real war starts at the inner core of the human being. You, Michelle, have seen this in your peer group when you speak of those who are suicidal. The norm is not the norm anymore. Humans are not called to be humans anymore, but they are becoming mechanized like robots. And when we speak of the essence of human beings, we are speaking of that essence, what makes a human, human. The peril is there. Dear angels, that is a lot to take in. Can you please elaborate on the mechanization of humans? Can you please give me and the Twin Flame community some concrete examples to follow? You as humans have been isolated for a long period of time. Many have not seen friends and family members for months or even years. Many find themselves alone without human touch or contact beyond mechanical means. Insert uh, my comment here, Michelle's comment here. I think they mean computers when they say that. Continuing with angelic messages. Separation of the human population is very dangerous. It is so dangerous, in fact, that we see humans degrading at a faster rate than we ever thought possible. Again, you have seen it in the youth. Humans have been in individualized pods or cells, meaning that they live alone, they eat alone, they work alone, they die alone. It is becoming more frequent and more accepted that people isolate themselves and live in a bubble wherein they see no one except on a screen. This is dangerous to the human spirit, and that is what is being lost. Dear angels, so if I may reiterate, everyone believes that the real problems of the world are out there somewhere with war or conflict or political unrest, when the real problem is much closer to home. That is exactly our point. The destruction of human existence is happening before our eyes and few see it happening. In part, it's because they are not looking. Dear angels, what must we do to reverse this, this destruction? Be with others. Be with people and invite people in. 
Nothing can replace the essence of human beings together. Unite in love, unite in happiness. There is a false sense that separateness is good. This was never the intention of human existence. Dear angels, can you please indicate what other things that we, as light workers, can do to help heal humanity? Do good work. Stay observant to the facts. Don't fall prey to false beliefs. The human condition is weakened. You must be strong. Take breaks from media. Take breaks from your computer. Listen to nature. Observe. Be good to one another. If you have lost your way, then find it again. Dear angels, thank you so much for the encouragement. Can we please bring it back to my original question about divine feminine twin flames and why it is so difficult at this time for them to keep the faith? Everything is tied in, so you see, dear one. When there is chaos going on, around you, it can be difficult to see the light, and yet it is there. The bridge between you and your twin flame is not far off. It is simply clouded by the chaos that is going on around you. Be courageous. Courage is sparse these days. Humans are used to easy. This is not easy. You are breaking the mold to create a new one. Thank you so much, angels. I really appreciate your help and insight. So this is just my commentary, and I'm going to start with a, a pretty shocking statement. And then as this channeling um, and commentary moves forward, I'm going to unpack what the angel said, and I'm going to unpack the statement that I made. <laughs> um the shocking statement I'm going to put forth is that humans are pretty crappy overall, meaning like when you think about the evolution of human existence and the fact that we have 5,000 years or so, give or take, of recorded human history, right? We're just speaking of recorded human history from you know, Egyptian scrolls to cave drawings, whatever we have in front of our eyes as far as what has happened in human existence for the past 5,000 or so years, we do have some things that are recorded from way back then prior to, you know, anything being written down in books. We do have some other recorded things in history. So we have about 5,000 years of recorded stuff. And in those 5,000 years of recorded stuff where we have seen patterns of human behavior, one would think that in 2022, 5,000 years later after recorded history, that we would have learned our lessons. And seeing things as they are in the world today, it just feels like an exacerbation of the horribleness that humans can do. And so when we look at this through the lens of what is going on today in our world and from the microcosm to the macrocosm, I'm not speaking of only world events. I'm going from the microcosm to the macrocosm versus the macrocosm to the microcosm because as the angels mentioned, it does start with each individual person. <laughs> so if you, for example, are falling prey as the angels outlined to the conversation in social groups, the conversation on social media, the conversation through media outlets, the conversation through different sources on the internet when it comes to the macrocosm, which is speaking of world events, political events, country events. When we speak of that, when you participate in any of that, as a human, you are also contributing to the conversation of what is going on in 
the manipulation of human existence to be less than evolved. And I believe that there's more division, more chaos, more digging up of the dirt of the primal instincts, which is really based in the ego. It's based in the limbic system. It's based in our amygdala with the fight or flight response. We're seeing more of that. We're seeing more of that primal human instinct to fight, to run, to flee, to um, cause territorialism. This is mine. This is me. This is mine. This is my stuff. Or this is what I believe, so what you believe is wrong. So we're seeing a lot more of that in, a, in an exacerbated form. I would say. It's always been there. I think we're seeing it in a lot more exaggerated and exacerbated form. But in addition to that, we have all of these people who have awakened to the spiritual journey. And so at the same token, we have this great openness to enlightenment. And in 2020, in January of 2020, and I know I've mentioned this before, in January of 2020, personally, I channeled a message from the angels, and this was prior to the pandemic. I had channeled a message from the angels that talked about something called the Great Divide. And at that moment, I was under the impression that they were referring to Twin Flames, and I did produce a video on that. I believe it was around the time that I produced the video called The Twin Flame Matrix. It may have touched on that in that video. But there was this concept of the Great Divide. And little did I know that they were speaking about something much bigger because this is where we are now. We are in this time period of the Great Divide. And what does the Great Divide mean in this sense for twin flames, light workers, spiritually awakened people? <laughs> what this does mean is that as a twin flame, as a spiritual light worker, you have a choice. You have a choice. And this is what the angels are saying. You have a choice. You can choose to follow the rhetoric that is out there. You can choose to participate in the conversation, which creates fighting, division, disharmony, lack of unity, ego, egos inflating everywhere. <laughs> um, some, those, those kinds of activities that really do feed the ego. It feeds on that ego. It feeds on the animal instincts within us. And you have that choice. You absolutely positively have that choice. You can do that. Or you can choose to ignore the conversation and move toward enlightenment, move toward the space that truly makes you human rather than a base instinct animal. And you're given this choice now. You are actually given this choice now. I was thinking about this on the way um, back from the gym this morning as I was thinking about doing this. And I know this is going to be controversial for many of you out there. So I apologize in advance if I am going to tickle your ego and ruffle your feathers <laughs> and those baser instincts of you that is hardwired in your limbic system, um, that fight or flight, fear, freeze, you know, like I'm going to be fearful. So I'm going to respond in fear. So I apologize in advance if I trigger that. But um, I was truly thinking about things from a much bigger picture here when we move toward plugging in to the conversation of the macrocosm versus 
plugging into spirit and healing that microcosm, healing within so that everything that you do in conversation, your actions are based from the higher spiritual self, the higher spiritual consciousness so that you don't ever have to plug in to the egoic conversation that is prevalent everywhere, everywhere. So I had two thoughts on this front. The first thought was that spirit gave us all as humanity an opportunity in March of 2020 the second half of March of 2020, to be exact, when the world stopped completely for two weeks or so, just depending on where you live in the world. But Spirit gave us the opportunity as we stopped the world for two weeks or so, the the entire world stopped, right? So the entire world stopped for two weeks. And it was the great equalizer, right? There was no natural selection. It was the great equalizer because everybody was forced out of their jobs. Everybody was forced to stay home. Everybody was on lockdown. Nobody could go out. Nobody could do anything, basically. And it was really, truly the great equalizer because everybody around the globe, for the first time probably ever, was experiencing exactly the same thing at exactly the same time. And so it really, truly was the great equalizer. And during that time period, if you did not realize your humanness during that time period, if you lived in fear, if you were listening to the news every day, if you were watching the media every day, and in Instead of going inward and going, wow, this is a really interesting human experience that we are all experiencing that is equalizing us to be human, and rather traded that in for this these fear-based thoughts of like, oh, I need to pay attention to what the news is saying. I need to pay attention to what the politicians are saying. I need to pay attention to what our next move can be. Then you became a part of the machine or the mechanized forms that the angels were referring to rather than being self-observant, observing humanity for what it is, observing the miracle of what that was, what that was. Because if you think about it, that moment in time was the great equalizer before the great division. Exactly. That's exactly what happened. It was the great equalizer right before the great division. And so it goes. So it goes. We know what's happened in the past two years. We know exactly what's happened in the past two years. There's no need to reiterate here. But the one thing I did think about is that that moment of great equalization, that moment of decision where you needed to decide in a way, and believe me, it's not as black and white as I'm making it out to be, but I'm trying to make it black and white so that you can see the points that I'm trying to make because it's going to follow up with exactly what the angels were saying. At that moment of the great equalization, you had the opportunity to decide, am I going to be like the primal animal that I am and just live in fear? fear and follow the pack, follow the crowd into whatever the leader of the crowd is saying at any given moment or time? Or am I going to be a spiritual being with higher spiritual thought, connected to spirit, connected to higher truth, and am I going to live from that space? Now, 98% of the population, and now now hear me out here, 98% of the population or more decided to follow that primal instinct of fear. Now, here is what I'm going to say. Whether you're pro or against all of the things that were being ordered, it was still operating out of fear, right? 
very few could independently say, I need to make decisions based on my own inner gut, inner instinct, and I'm not going to necessarily uh, cave into these fearful thoughts, rubric, whatever, whatever that may be. But here's where it got super weird. And this is this is the this is the thought that is going to be very controversial, but it's going to prove a point. It's just going to prove a point as to Today, where are you going with this? Okay, today, March 24th, when I'm publishing this, 2022, from this point forward, based on the information that the angels just gave you, where are you going to choose to move to today and forward, right? Because you can't change the past. What happened in the past is the past. You can only look at your present moment, make some changes in the present moment to impact your future. That's the only thing you can do. You can't do anything but that. One thing, and and again, I'm red flagging this. I'm telling you, this is the controversial thing that I'm going to say. And it's going to ruffle some feathers. It's going to hurt some. It's going to bruise some of your egos. I'm, I'm putting that straight up right up there. The thing that always scared me the most is the willingness. <laughs> the willingness. Now, try to look, please, from the bigger, bigger, bigger picture. I'm not talking about the virus. I'm not talking about the pandemic. I'm talking about bigger, 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 bigger picture here. Okay? How easy was it? How easy was it for leaders, politicians, worldwide, right? I'm not talking about just in the United States. Worldwide, how easy was it for them to mandate certain things like your face must be covered at all times, even while exercising, and you need to limit your time that you're spending outdoors. Now, from a distanced point of view, we're talking about distanced point of view. Distanced point of view is what is the first thing we do when we're born into this world? We take in a deep breath. What is the last thing we do when we exit this world? We exhale. It was very, very, very easy to get humanity to comply, to block their breathing, to block the only thing that sustains us in life. Super easy. Super easy to block that. It took practically nothing to get everybody on board to do it. Not everybody, but you know, a majority of people said, sure, I'll block my breathing in all instances of life for an indeterminate amount of time. The only thing that sustains my life, I will block it. And the second thing that was so easy to do was to get us to block our identity through masking. And... Again, I'm not taking a political point of view here. I'm taking a spiritual point of view. Because what I am saying is that it is so easy for humans to fall prey to fear and to not think about things from a bigger spiritual perspective. It was so easy to like manipulate people into doing things that normally they would never think of doing. That I think that is the scarier piece here is how incredibly easy it was. So normally, if you have your face covered and you go into a bank, traditionally prior to 2020, one would say that you might be a bank robber trying to conceal your identity for theft. And today, it's perfectly acceptable and normal that one should conceal one's identity. So it's just, you know, so looking from a bigger um, point of view, when we talk about the mechanization of humanity, the mechanical robotic way in which humans have been programmed to act, to react, to follow the crowd, to have crowd-based consciousness, to have this um, this fear-based mind consciousness, you twin flame, you have a choice. You have a choice from this point forward. You can become part of that mechanization of humanity. 
which is going to be tossed to and fro depending on whatever leadership happens to be in that role, whether it's media, whether it's politicians, whether it's CEOs of companies, whatever it is, right? You have the opportunity to do that or you have the opportunity to forget about all that and start connecting with people one-on-one, connecting in groups, connecting with like-minded individuals, connecting um, with through, you know, the means of human touch, human existence, humanity, connecting with nature, starting nature groups, starting hiking groups, whatever it is. But there is this real world problem that we are encountering of this disconnect with humanity. And frankly, it scares me a little bit. When I when it goes to like how easy it is to manipulate humans in general, that's pretty darn scary. It's like give up your breathing. Give up your breathing. Just give it up. Hinder your breathing. Give it up. People are like, okay, sure. No problem. The next thing is going to be like, you know, give up your food and water. And we are at the point in humanity today that people will willingly do shit like that. (laughs) They'll be like, sure, no problem. Absolutely. And then make people villainous who don't want to do it. You know, so like, I think we have a choice. And the choice that the angelic guidance is asking people to make is to go back to being human. What does it mean to be human and what does it mean to separate us from animals? Like how are we separate from base animal instincts, right? What separates us? What kind of actions, reactions, what states of consciousness actually makes us different from those baser instincts, And I do believe, and I'm going to do a video on this actually, but I do believe that the um, psychobabble of this idea of separateness that the angels are talking about, like, you know, we've been encouraged to be separate. We've been encouraged to live in a bubble more and more and more and more in society. Not only, again, not only in the United States where I live, but in other societies, it's been encouraged to break away from families, break away from whatever, like live by yourself, live, you know, live for yourself, individualization, not having children even because, you know, the world's overpopulated. So there is this pull toward loneliness. There is this pull toward separateness. There is this pull toward like if you are lonely and you live by yourself, then that's all of a sudden not normal anymore. That that can't even be normal anymore. And to briefly, before I wrap this up, because I know this is getting really long to inflame, to wrap this up, the angels mentioned a problem that I have been seeing. And if you are a Gen Z or a millennial I know you know you've seen this in your friend groups. I tend to hang out with a lot of uh, Gen Z and millennials. And even in the group that I hang out with, there are several people who are suicidal. And I've talked about this with one of my friends. That why is this happening to Gen Zs now? And they're mostly Gen Z. So I'm speaking of like under the age of 28 or so. 28 and under. And it's because of what is happening. It's because of this cultural psychobabble acceptance that everybody must be separate. Everybody must live alone. The world is going to crap. Like, nothing good is happening. So I, as a Gen Z, can't get married, can't have kids because I'm just going to ruin the world more than it already is ruins. And everything, every contact that they have, for the most part, is through the internet. So again, when we're connected to this mechanization of humanity, we are living under false pretenses because we're living under the pretenses of what the people in the media happen to be feeding us or the people in leadership happen to be feeding us or what happens to be viral at that particular time. 
So, you, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot to unpack, to, unpack here. But I think, you know, honestly, what the angels were saying, the solution is rather simple. Let's not make this complicated. The solution is rather simple. Connect. Connect with people individually. Connect with people in groups, in person. Start creating your tribe. Start connecting with your tribe in person. Give people freaking hugs. Dr. Leo Buscalio is one of my favorite, like, authors. He was kind of the hippie from the 1960s and 70s. He was called the love doctor. His prescription was 12 hugs per day for optimal health. How many of you are getting 12 hugs a day? How many of you are giving 12 hugs a day? To humans, not pets. Pets count, but not as much as humans. Because we're speaking of human connection, human beings, human essence, human soul. So that is your homework for this week. Give 12 hugs a day, receive 12 hugs a day. And to that end, I'm going to sign out for now. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for subscribing to my channel below. Click on the bell, scroll up to all for all notifications. And thank you for giving the video a thumbs up. Thank you for sharing this video with other twin flames. And thank you so much for your support on my YouTube channel. You can buy a book or two or three. You can join a boot camp or meditation course. You can also get a reading. And I will see you guys in the next video.